You're listening to XVGM Radio. Welcome to XVGM Radio, where the bits keep coming. I'm Justin. And I'm Mike. And this is episode 22, Dolphin Blue. Yeah, Dolphin Blue is an interesting little title. This is a very obscure game. We're doing a single game spotlight today. The track that you just heard is kind of an example of what a lot of the other music is going to sound like, to a degree. That music that brought us in was stage 1-1, or 1-1. And the compositions for this soundtrack are done by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonetani, and Maiko Ayuchi. Yeah. I think I brought this up to you. You did. Right? And I had no idea what you were talking about. (laughs) And then then you explained uh, where it came from. Yeah. And I thought it sounded really cool. Like, I am a fan of the Metal Slug games. Right. And this is a very similarly developed game to the Metal Slug series, almost like a... uh, love letter in a way a a, um, spiritual successor if you will sure yeah let's go with that (laughs) it's not made by snk we'll get into the development and history and everything and what system it's on and everything in just a little bit i found out about this game at too many games a few years ago Mm -hmm. Uh, i was there with my buddy rewind mike from youtube and we were just kind of uh hanging out on the last day and he spotted the arcade cabinet for it and was like, you want to go play it? And I was like, I don't even know what this did, game is. Did he know what it was? Uh, no, I don't think he did. Hmm. Um, I'll have to ask him, but I don't think he did. It's just a random like, hey, look at that game. Let's yeah. Play yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, that looks kind of flashy. Let's go check it out. <laughs> and so it was on one of those little like white candy cabs, they call them. I think they call them candy cabs. Candy cab? Yeah, they're like, they're like white. Well, usually they're like white cabinets. They're a little smaller. They're more cutesy looking arcade oh. cabinets. You see them a lot in Japan. They're usually like... Uh, linked together. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we sat down, we played it from start to finish, and had a blast. And it only took us maybe like I don't know, forty-five minutes to an hour to play yeah. it. Had a lot of fun with it. Loved the music and everything from it. So I wanted to do a quick little spotlight on this game because I think it's pretty cool, and not a lot of people talk about it. So it's worth mentioning. Yeah, no, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you and I played it to get through it mm-hmm. and and get an understanding of it like a week ago and I haven't had that much fun just like blowing through and beating a game mm-hmm. in, in a while I mean yeah. it, it, it is a very quick game I think yeah. uh, we beat it in like, like 50, 50 something minutes, minutes. Yeah. yeah 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 so it's on average with you know your standard like beat em ups or yeah. you know shooters or whatever shmups whatever you want to call it so but this game is developed by Sammy Stam- Sammy Studios uh, it was developed in 2003 and this game takes place in the future something has caused all the dry land to sink down into the ocean. And so new civilizations were built on whatever was left over. The people started taking advantage of the underwater ruins and the underwater areas just to kind of, you know, start over right. with their right. lives. And in, in this this new world, or at least this world, which decided to take the name Aquadia, I think? Not, yeah. yeah. Aquadia, Aqu- Aquadia. Aquadia. Yeah. We'll say Aquadia. It sounds more... Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah. <laughs> Aquadia, um, Aquidia. Yeah. But so there there are two main factions in this world. There's the, the Royal Army and the Evil Empire. <laughs> Guess who is the good guy? Yeah. Uh, the Evil Empire. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they're, they're constantly fighting for control over the land and mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, so the Royal Army is headed up uh, by Princess Annette. 
um, and she is, you know, obviously the force for good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the evil empire is run by several bad guys and ex-marines. Right. You play as Irio, who is an arms dealer, and he's kind of a, a wild, crazy guy, always out for adventure. Or you could play as Anne, who is more of a, I don't know, like a more passionate individual who's fighting for the the royal army. Mm -hmm. Princess Annette ends up getting kidnapped because she has knowledge of something called the Blue Tear. And so it's up to both uh, Irio and Anne to try to go after her and try to rescue her. Yeah. Uh, The game itself is sort of a typical side-scroller a horizontal shooter, like like we said, Metal Slug, Metal Slug early, right. earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, the player controls either Irio or Anne, who are both rendered uh, as like two uh, 2D sprites. Yeah. If you're if you're on the left side, you're player one. You're Irio. If you're on the right side, uh, player two. You're right. Anne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't like pick who you want to be exactly. or anything well, like that. Well, right. You, I think you can. Like you, it, you, based can, on which can you which both joystick. be like one no, character. No. The, yeah, per, so. per, the, the person whoever whoever takes. The, the left side player, the, the player one side, mm. is, is always Irio, yeah. and whoever takes the, the right side is always Anne. Yeah. But yeah, so the, the environment itself is 3D, but you but you are 2D characters. Right, right. Um, and you also get to, so it's called, called Dolphin Blue because you get to ride super-powered dolphins. Yeah, and it's super fun. <laughs> super, super fun. And then, you know, like like your typical shooters, there's uh, different guns and stuff that you can pick up. You've got a knife if, you, if you're close enough to an enemy and you right. hit the shoot button, you actually just stab like, the guy. Just like with Metal Slug, right? Yep, yep. Then you can also get, like, power-ups and points and all that sort of thing yep. to, uh, to go after the evil empire. So that's the game uh, in a nutshell. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it and break it down level by level as we go through. Uh, this game has a bunch of music, but we've picked... Uh, for the most part, like the bulk of the tracks that you're going to hear throughout this adventure. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's also a lot of really quick track, like mm-hmm. jingles on the soundtrack. There's yeah. Like four or five seconds. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, regarding the music itself, depending on which version you find for the soundtrack, it may be incomplete. D- definitely finding like an actual rip of the soundtrack that's not, that that's like a complete rip. Uh, it's going to be difficult because the names of the songs are not all listed properly, so we kind of had to apply our own names, if you will. So that's why, like, Stage 1-1 one one that we came in on uh, for that intro, that very militant-sounding intro, it's, you know, short and sweet and everything, but th- the actual name is, like, Area Zero... It's, like, yeah. First Area one you know, zero 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 one or whatever. So it's it's kind of complicated yeah. uh, for how these ended up getting listed on the uh, actual soundtrack when you rip it. So yeah. <laughs> but with that, let's jump into your first pick. Yeah. So I picked stage one dash two, which is the follow up directly after stage one dash one. And again, it's from Dolphin Blue by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonitani, and Maiko Ayuchi. <laughs>
That was stage 1-2 from Dolphin Blue. I swear I didn't mean to rhyme that. I mean, hey, I came in on a rhyme when I said episode 22, Dolphin Blue. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, so the track (laughs) was composed again by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonitani, and Maiko Euchi. What do you think of this one? Yeah, I like it. I dug it. it. In the beginning, there was some really nice uh, bass grooves going on there. And uh, there was one part, I I didn't hear it at any other point, like Mm. maybe a little bit before halfway through the song. The like the synth piano that's going on there has this like gliss where they just like you know go, yeah. go down the keys and I was like oh that's you don't hear that very often in, <laughs> especially in, like v, uh, VGM yeah and that's true. I really like that two things one dem bongos <laughs> yes yes so good and I love the bass line on mm. this it's almost like a fretless bass mm. yeah 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 I was digging that too and the horns in the beginning the horn like flourishes. You know, the da 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 Very, like, <laughs> outgoing and provocative and proclaiming. That's fair. All uh, those words. The the, uh, the, the the trumpets or the horns in this uh, sort of remind me of that meme with the, uh, the, the like, the trumpet meme. Okay. I can't really explain it. If, if you if you, if you you don't know what I'm talking about, just, like, look up trumpet memes, uh, trumpet meme videos. Okay. Tr- trumpet kid. Okay. Will do. <laughs> so, <laughs> this level has you chasing after the princess's captors. Uh, so when the game starts off, uh, it's pretty much right from the get-go, you're chasing after the, the princess, and she's being whisked away on an aircraft. And so you start off on one of the aircraft carriers, and uh, Ario and Anne, or just Ario, or just Anne, or both of them together, if you got a friend, <laughs> they quickly hop on dolphins when they reach the end of the ship, which is that stage 1-1 one one, right. uh, track that we played in the intro. And then you go underwater, and that's, I believe, when this track plays... Is it underwater or no? N- no, or you're, when you you're, pop you're, back up, yeah, you, yeah. You, you hop in the dolphins and then you're you're riding on the water, oh, right. chasing after a ship. Yep, yep, yep. And that's what this this track was. Right, right. And so you're attacking enemy soldiers while riding on top of the dolphin. Mm. And the boss for this stage, uh, which we'll we'll talk about the boss track in uh, a little bit in this episode. But the boss for this stage is a giant ship with like claw like arms, almost like uh, like like a backhoe or like a. Uh, one of those like oh, uh, yeah. things that like scoops, you know, like a dump truck, and it's just like tries to scoop at you, and almost like a lobster hand, <laughs> you know, like a lobster claw, so like a claw shrimp, claw shrimp, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is it, and then you beat the level, and then you move on to stage two. Well, first they score you on how you did the level. And oh yeah, well two. you know. <laughs> Yeah, now you, you you gotta you gotta know if you if you won the level or not. Right, right, who, right. Who the real winner is? <laughs> who died more times? Who got guaranteed, the best score? <laughs> guaranteed, it was me. I died <laughs> more times. <laughs> score is kind of a lost art when it comes to video games. Not not a lot of people really kind of focus on score anymore. Yeah, I mean it's it the the competitive aspect has gone from generally score to to like the one v one stuff like sure. Um, and, and like the fighter games and stuff. 1v1 me, bro. Yo, I'll take you. <laughs> 1v1 Final Destination, no items. Yeah, 1v1 me and Mega Man 3. No items. <laughs> no power-ups. No power-ups. Uh, no, beat the game with just Gemini Beam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but that's that's pretty much that stage, and then you move into our next track. Um, so, next up we'll hear stage 2-1, uh, obviously from... Dolphin Blue, composed by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonatani, and Maiko Yuchi.
Welcome back. That was stage 2-1 from our spotlight game of the evening, Dolphin Blue. This came out on the arcade system in 2003. Yes, and we'll <laughs> talk a little bit in just a second about what specific arcade system it came out on because it's very specific. It is very, very and specific. And very obscure. So, <laughs> what do you think of this track? A little bit more serious in tone. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's like the, the first stage was sort of the catching up uh, or tr- trying trying to chase after the, mm. the, the princess and, and going after this this kind of goofier guy and this one it, it's like no nah, they you know they're keeping the princess away mm-hmm. and you know, we gotta it's time to get serious as Mega Man X would say <laughs> a lot of Mega Man references so far for oh, some no. odd reason I'm trying to get sponsored by Mega Man yeah yeah <laughs> that and Taco Bell <laughs> yes <laughs> So, yeah, no, I was digging this one. I really like the, uh, I guess, like, timpani flourishes. The, yeah, this, this one is a, is a lot more, like, militant or militaristic. Definitely, definitely. Um, it's, it's got a very nice cadence to yeah. it. Yeah, nice little bounce to it, mm-hmm. almost like like a military-style bounce. Yep. I was digging it. I was feeling it. But I, I do prefer the, the previous track. I mean... Uh, but you're gonna you're gonna kind of see a lot of this type of stuff in this game. So, oh yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, I mean going back to sort of the Metal Slug stuff, mm-hmm. the, it, it's a very like military style yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not as sort of like goofy style mm-hmm. as uh, as Metal Slug. The, True. The, the 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 art or the yeah, like the characters don't react goofy. Yep. Like they do in Metal Slug. They're a little bit more serious um, when you're blowing these dudes away. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the the, the, peop- the people look like people. The yeah. I'm remembering Metal Slug like tanks that are all mm. like weirdly proportioned and whatnot. Yeah. And I mean, there are some silly machines. Don't get me wrong. Mm. In this game, things but... are a lot more like normally proportioned. Exactly. They're exactly. not like chibi style yep. or whatever. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So this game came out on something called the Atomus Wave, and this is a custom arcade board system that Sammy created. Sammy, actually, it was either like right around this time or shortly thereafter, ended up buying Sega mm. um, because Sega mm. was kind of in hot water at the time and they bought out Sega and they became Sega Sammy or Se- yeah. I think they kept the Sega name because Sammy was, you know, not as, not as known, not as yeah. known. but I think it was, uh, it was called Sammy Sega or Sega Sammy or something like that. So the way that this arcade system worked, it was... A ca- the cabinet and the system itself of the arcade board is based on Sega's Naomi hardware, and the cabinets can be swapped out easily with different joysticks depending on the game. So, for example, if you have like flying games, you can swap out and have like a flying joystick. Hmm. If you have a fighting game, which, you know, stuff like King of Fighters came out for it, yep. uh, you could swap out and have like a fight pad style, you know, like the six button fight pads. Yeah. So, interesting tidbit, speaking of fighters, SNK, after being bought out by Playmore, they became SNK Playmore, and they decided to develop a total of five titles, including Metal Slug 6. However, the Metal Slug team wasn't involved in uh, Dolphin Blue, despite these these two games feeling very similar. <laughs> the Atomus Wave in Japan also had a modem setup option, which would allow for things like high scores to be uploaded, but unfortunately that was discontinued in 2006. Mm. The, uh, the Atomus Wave arcade systems and their boards typically fetch for hundreds of thousands of dollars online. Yeah, they're pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, I've looked up just because I was curious to try to get myself an Atomus Wave and try to get myself a uh, Dolphin Blue. Mm-hmm. And there's a comedian uh, named Tom Segura who talks about... Yep. <laughs> I, you probably know if you listen to a lot of comedy like I do on Pandora... Um, you probably know where I'm going with this, but he'll be like, oh, you know, like, sometimes I'll just go online and I'll just shop for, like, lavish stuff that I'll never <laughs> buy. So you'd be like, oh, you know, for, you know, $400 million yacht, uh, you know, I'm not, not going to buy it right now, but, you know, maybe I'll just, you know, <laughs> click in my, uh, put that in my, put it in buy it cart. now or yeah. buy it later, you know, add to cart, yeah. you know, but not, like, not check out yet you know that sort of thing so that, that's what i do is i'll just go on ebay and i'll be like what arcade machines are out that i could buy what video game standees and cardboard standees can i buy and i'll look yeah, up like yeah. the most expensive items yeah, yeah. add that to my watch list. yeah 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 <laughs> add that to my watch list let me buy that later wow so yeah ridiculous so yeah this this does go for quite a hefty chunk of change so out of curiosity were you looking for like the cabinet or were you looking for the 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 board the module that, was, that you can that you that you put the the dolphin blue you would need the candy to. cab unless you're hooking it up to your tv yeah. i guess you, i could you technically you hook it up to a crd yeah yeah 
and then I would need the Atomis Wave actual unit, which is pretty neat looking. It's almost like a watermelon co colored yes, like red unit. It's pretty cool looking. And then, of course, you would need Dolphin Blue, the board, the arcade board, which I, it's weird because it's like it's almost like a cartridge. Yes. And it like snaps into yeah, it, the, it, the it module. Like clips in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, was, it's really cool looking. Yeah, no, that, that that's why I asked because uh, yeah. one of the videos that I was watching uh, just to learn more about yeah. the Atomus Wave sure, and, sure. and Dolphin Blue had this guy who'd built his own cabinet and mm. like he had this stuff like you know screwed into the side of the, uh, the board yeah. and, it, and you actually need a lot more than just like the cartridge or whatever it is sure. in the Thomas Wave like there's this other it's, it's got to be connected to uh, this other system that can then be connected to to speakers Jesus. in order for yeah no it's yeah. crazy yeah, yeah. That, that's why I was asking because if it's like if it just that like a Thomas Wave thing sure. is a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. that's ridiculous yeah it's crazy oh my god yeah Pretty nuts. I will just go to too many games and play it again. Mm -hmm. Or just play it on emulator, because we actually got it going on uh, emulator. Yeah. I had a lot of trouble getting it going, but you were actually able to save the day, so. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's stage 2-1. I guess we'll move into stage 2-2, two, two, and then we'll talk a little bit about stage 2 as well. Yeah.
Welcome back to XVGM Radio. That was Dolphin Blue Stage 2 2. And what Man. a great track! Yeah, good job, Justin. Thanks. I I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Uh, I I like sort of the the opening, the da da da, very menacing, da-da. almost Jaws like. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then when it kicks into that funky, do do do. Yes. This is another one of those bass grooves that I love so so much. Yeah. No, I was really digging this. Like every instrument had its own sound, unique voice, yep. and it just flowed so well together. It just was <laughs> great. Really clean sounding, just awesome. Love this track. Agreed. So tell me a little bit about Stage 2. So Stage 2 takes our intrepid adventurers under the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so they, with their dolphins, dive and they appear to be able to hold their breath forever. Right? Is one of the interesting things. So they're they're just swimming around, there's no like breathing apparatus yeah, that no. like they're not they're not like passing air back and forth. No. Dolphins aren't kissing them. Right. They're just, <laughs> Gross. just sw- swimming around. <laughs> Why do you immediately go there first? Well, because like, the dolphins could go up, take in some, you know, take in some air, come down, and, like breathe air into their... Yeah, but no dolphin's going to do that. No. Like... I mean, these, these dolphins are trained pretty well. You press a button and they like fly across the screen and blow stuff up. That's so. true. Yeah. They, like That's one of your special moves. You hold the button down and then you launch them across and the dolphin goes flying towards whatever direction you have them pointing in. Yes. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so. But, so that's why I think dolphins should be able to bring you... I don't all know. Right, I'm, all right. I'm okay. giving up on that one. All right. All right. You're, 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 you're stretching, <laughs> oh, but I'm stretching we'll allow it. We'll allow it. But so underwater, you're actually... Um, you're, you're fighting like against the hull of a warship. You're you're tr- you're under this this boat mm. and you're, you're blowing stuff up. Very Contra-esque, to... this part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. Because yeah. like part... Like as you as you get through, the level's constantly... It's one of those like constantly scrolling levels. Right. Auto-scroll, um, like belt scrolling, that, right? That's the word, auto-scroll. Yep. Mm. And as you're, as you're going through, like there's parts of the ship in the way and it mm. gets really... Like the this stressful music really fits this part of the level, definitely. Because you're like, you know, if you, if you don't blow the blow the ship up, mm. you're gonna get smashed right. between the edge of the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once the ship is destroyed, the level transitions back to an enemy warship where Ario and Anne take out soldiers and turrets and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But the mini, mini boss or mid boss in this level is a giant cannon attached to the ship with three gun turrets. Uh, and then the boss of the level is a steamrolling tank uh, on top, of, like you're fighting on top, on top mm. of like the helicarrier. Right, right, right. All the stages, though they are mostly similar, uh, a lot of them follow either above ground mm-hmm. in you know just above the water or on a warship, uh, and then you get tossed in the water and you're riding the dolphins or you're underneath underwater. There's some locale background changes for yep. the most part. The backgrounds themselves look very similar to um, Sega Dreamcast games, which makes sense because it's built on the Naomi hardware. Yep. But like, it, you can't help but look at this and be like, oh, that looks like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, where like you have the 2D <laughs> sprites in the front and then you've yeah. got those... 3D like rotating like giant uh, cannons turning and twisting and the giant airships like moving around and stuff. It's very visually impressive for its time. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what other games I've seen like on the Dreamcast one that look like that, but I think you nailed it with Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, too. Marvel vs. Capcom 2. The the visual feel yeah, to yeah. the game feels like something on the Dreamcast. Dreamcast. It just totally makes sense because I, and, and of that I feel Naomi like, hardware. I feel like I saw that you can emulate this on the Dreamcast. Yeah, so they are working on trying to... Oh, they've been working, working on it. They've been oh, working on it for oh. a while to try to get it to run. So we got it to run uh, through Demo. Right, right. Which, but, but that was actually emulating the Atomus way. Right, um, right, it right. It happens to be a Dreamcast Naomi uh, emulator. Right, stuff. right, right. So that's kind of how we got it to run. But uh, they are working on trying to adapt it. Uh, I don't know where they're at at this point, but I heard that at one point hmm. or another they were trying to get Atomus Wave games to work on the Dreamcast. Dreamcast. So that way you could just burn it. Yeah, to a yeah. disc and play the game and that'd be awesome I mean like yeah. I totally would get like a repro you know like a professionally done like Etsy repro of Dolphin Blue <laughs> uh, you know because they're not selling these you know it's not like Sammy selling this stuff so right. if somebody came along and was like boom you know because Dreamcast games you could play burn games you right, know, without right. any modification on the Dreamcast, so yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I, I thought I thought I had read that it was 
doable for the Dreamcast or that it was done for the Dreamcast. I didn't, right. know, I didn't realize it was still being worked on, so I, that's that's cool. Well, it's still being worked on in the sense that fans are working on it. No, but the, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah. I, I, I hadn't heard that like it was officially done. I thought I had heard that fans had, had done it. I didn't realize. Yeah. I, I, I misread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, yeah. I, I don't think... I, I, I'm 99.9% sure Sammy could care less about right, the Thomas right. Wave at this point, so it's not like an official thing. But yeah, I think fans are working on it. Maybe they stopped or whatever, but uh, hopefully they pick it back up because I'd, I'd love to play this on the Dreamcast. It'd, it'd be a fun little title to just burn a disc and pop it in and be good to go. All right, well, it looks like we are getting a call on our request hotline. Maybe it's a request. Maybe it's a you know a song request. Maybe, hopefully, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Caller, you are on the air with XVGM Radio. Who am I speaking with? Help, help, please save me. Just play a boss track. Any of the boss tracks. Save me! Well, this girl sounds like she's in real trouble, doesn't she? Yeah, it also sounds like she really wants to hear the boss theme track. Yeah, well, I don't blame her. She probably wants to be saved. So let's hear boss theme 1-2, 2-2, 3-2, and 4-2 by, again, Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonetani, and Maiko Euchi off of Dolphin Blue, released in 2003 for the Atomus Wave. Welcome back. That was the boss 1-2, 2-2, 3-2, and 4-2 <laughs> boss theme. Yes. Uh, many of these bosses start out with a different piece, like with a custom or personalized piece of mm. music, uh, and then transitions into what you just heard. Right, right. And it's usually, you know, the like mini boss typically right oh uh, well no no because uh it, it this is the, the the boss at the end of every level right it's a little confusing because it's like you fight a boss and then you fight a second boss like right after 
for some of those levels. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, um, not all of them, but yeah, some of them. Like at, yeah, like at the end of level 1-1, one -one, you fight like this little like steamroller tank right. thing, and then you go into the ocean, and yep. then you fight the boss at the end of that level. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, some of these, it's like mini-boss, and then uh, that, that leads into the actual level boss. Yep. So, pretty cool. I, I was really feeling those bongos that just kind of rushed in <laughs> randomly. Yes, I, I like the energy of this uh, of, of this piece. There's sort of a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't really feel hectic. I would say it doesn't it's feel just... overwhelming. Yes. But those synths, like towards the end, where it's like da 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 da, that that part is a little intimidating because yes. of the the intenseness of those synths. Those the very like strong. Yeah. But uh, there's a bunch of tracks later on, like towards the uh, the ending themes, that uh, also sound similar to this. True, true. I would say the synth tensity of the <laughs> those synths <laughs> was very high. Well done, sir. Well done. There's some tracks later on where it's like the synth was so overpowering that I, <laughs> that I thought that the audio levels were ba unbalanced, and so I thought that the rip was unclean. So I looked. Oh. At, so <laughs> I looked all over the place. I found another rip for the soundtrack, and it was incomplete. Then I had to reach out to uh, one of our fellow podcasters to oh, yeah. help me out with uh, basically giving me a, like a second uh, opinion on the soundtrack and be like, "Hey, can you double check? Can you download the soundtrack? It, does it sound off <laughs> to you?" And you download the uh, the finished version I was like wow oh, sounds fine to me so i listened to it again i was like oh maybe it's just me because it sounded <laughs> off again but i, I don't know huh. yeah the weird weird so yeah so let's talk about the atomus wave sound components on this beast let's yes the sound processor is an arm 7 yamaha aika which is aica it's an internal 32-bit risk risc cpu 64 channel adpcm with 45 megahertz powered Yo, I heard Risk Architecture is going to change the game. Boom. That's what's up. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know too much about this chip, but uh, apparently it's probably based on the Yamaha Eika Super Intelligent Sound Processor yep. uh, that was created for the Sega Dreamcast and the Sega Naomi hardware for 1998. Yeah, I believe the the one in the Atomus Wave is either like a sister or cousin to uh, to that. Mm -hmm. the, the chips are very very similar. Yeah, yeah. You had said uh, the, the 64 channel 80 PCM uh, allows for 64 simultaneous different audio channels. Uh, each of those is at a 16 bit depth with a 48 kilohertz sampling rate. Huh. The uh, the chip itself runs at 45 megahertz, uh, which you said earlier. And honestly, this music sounds really clean. Like for for synth. Yeah, well, I, like I mean, for, for, especially for, for like chipset? Six, 16 bit sound. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it's it's really super clean, and it just sounds really focused and clear. And I'm I'm pretty impressed by the actual sound itself. It's it sounds. I'd say it's on par with most Dreamcast stuff, which makes sense yeah, because it's yeah. the same same or similar type of hardware. But I, I don't know. It just to me, it sounds a little cleaner than some of the Dreamcast stuff that was coming out. I, I feel like some of the Dreamcast rips that I've heard are a little dirtier sounding. You know, they're they're mm, they're they're yeah. you know they're not bad or anything. It's just they're a little more gritty, and this <laughs> sounds a lot more like clean and focused. So yeah, no, I would agree, yeah, and I I would imagine that has a lot to do with the number of channels. I don't think the the chip that was in the Dreamcast mm. had all of those channels. Uh, maybe it did. It also um, came out a couple years later, too, so yeah. maybe they enhanced the sound hardware because of that. Yeah, because the, the, the one you're talking about for the Dreamcast and the uh, the Naomi, Naomi Arcade came out in 1998. Mm. Uh, this coming out in 2003, they, they, this was likely you know a an evolution of that. Right, right, yeah. So let's move into our next track, which is Stage 3-1. And again, it's composed by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonetani, and Maiko Iuchi. And it's off of Dolphin Blue, which was developed by Sammy in 2003.
And you're back, and that was stage 3-1 from Dolphin Blue, the 2003 Atomus Wave release. Yes, super funky. I like this one. Yeah. The bass is nice and, like, slappy and loose, and then you've got just the, I mean, I don't know. That's how you like it, huh? Slappy and loose? Slappy and loose. (laughs) That's what what they say. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) But the I, I don't I don't know if funky is really the right word because like the upper register of like the, the synths and whatnot mm. I I don't think they're they're really funky but they're they're bluesy jazzy I don't know but I like I, them yeah I get what you mean I got a 70s vibe definitely mm. yeah that works but I think a large part of that is so those synths in the background the ones that are going like when and when and when and yeah that part was. It was interesting because it almost sounded like maybe like a Moog synthesizer in a way. Like, uh, yeah, 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 it was like some sort of like maybe. '70s like prog rock <laughs> like synth. It was cool. I, I was really feeling that. that yeah, was cool. So the composers on this one. Tell me about the composers that we have mentioned multiple times. Well, where do we start? Usually with the first one, yeah, and then the second one, and then the third. <laughs> So we'll start with Akihiro Uchida. Sounds like a plan. I believe uh, he was credited as Papa. Okay. Also known in the industry as Aki. Hmm. Started out in 1994 working for SNK doing a game called Top Hunter, Roddy and Kathy. I've heard of that. I've never played it though. I think it's like also kind of a side-scrolling, like, Metal metal Slug-inspired shmup. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I've that. never heard of it. Mm. <laughs> also, 1994, did sound for King of Fighters. Mm. Continued doing King of Fighters 95, 96, 97, and uh, King of Fighters Keo in 1998. Mm. Some, uh, some of the other things, they did a comp- music composition on Shinsetsu Samurai Spirits, Bishiro Retsuden, uh, that was in 1997, mm-hmm. uh, and then... Relatively short resume here, so I'm just going to go through the entire thing. Uh, there was st- sound staff on Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition in 1999, and then the last entry was Dolphin Blue in 2003. Oh, okay. And they disappeared. Yes, unfortunately, because mm. they, they put it they put some, some Went out with a bang. Sound. Yeah. So next up we have Toshihiro Yonetani, also known as Yone in the industry. Uh, another SNK person. They did King of Fighters R1 in 1998, uh, and then Dolphin Blue in 2003. That was okay. their last thing. And finally, we have Maiko Iuchi. No alternate name, just Maiko Iuchi. They started out with this game, Dolphin Blue, in 2003, doing sound. Uh, and then they went on to do music in Ace Combat X, Skies of Deception in 2006. Mm. R. Tanelico. Why does that sound familiar? So I think that's a racing game or an RPG. Yeah, I want to say RPG. Artanelico Koga, Nell of RCL on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, it's got to be an RPG. It is an RPG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then finally, la- the last thing we have here is Half Minute Hero, the second coming. Ah. In 2014, they were credited as musical artists. Good stuff on that soundtrack. Yes. yes definitely. All right, so we'll move into our next track, which is from stage 3-2. And again, it's from Dolphin Blue, the Atomus Wave 2003 release.
You're listening to XVGM Radio. Welcome back to XVGM Radio, and that was stage 3 2 from Dolphin Blue. <laughs> it's just going to keep happening. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Most of these stages have uh, something dash, dash 1 and dash 2, yeah. and we, we picked a lot of the dash 2s, so mm-hmm. get used to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this one was. This one felt a lot different to me. This one felt like sort of like a prog rock yeah. track to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially right in the beginning there. Uh, it feels like it's got one of those really funky time signatures mm-hmm. like 7.52 or something <laughs> something weird like that. Because I remember like every time I, I've, I've heard this track a few times because I like it, mm. but every time I hear it, like in my head, I, like, I've got a beat going and it doesn't match up with the beat going here. So I keep getting like yeah. off time in my head and I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I was definitely paying especially attention to the, the drums and mm-hmm. the sound of the drums specifically on this mm-hmm. one. They sounded like they had a little bit of a, re- a reverb, like yeah. echo on them, and it sounded awesome. It sounded <laughs> so good. And so I was really paying attention to that. But yeah, like that. Yeah, it's it's a, it's kind of like another one of those like Jaws type tracks where it's like mm. uh, something's lingering and there's danger everywhere and <laughs> That's that's kind of the vibe that I got from this track. So, but uh, level three involves another dolphin ride. Uh, this time you're going through a minecart level, and the so the minecarts are like above you, and so you're riding like the dolphin or going around with like on top of the dolphin riding it. Uh, and by the way, there's colors that kind of line up with these dolphins. So there's what's his name, Ario. Ario, Ario uses the blue dolphin and then Anne uses the pink dolphin yep. so um but you're going around on these dolphins going through this really visually impressive area where you've got these mine carts above you and the bad guys are in the mine carts so you're shooting up with your guns yep. to try to attack them with the various different guns that you get like the gatling gun the assault rifle the, the heavy gatling yeah the heavy gatling yeah. gun you know all, all sorts of different weapons so uh, one thing I like about this game is that when you die with a weapon you get to keep using it so if you yes. die with like an assault unless, rifle unless you die and then you're out of lives yeah and you're out of lives but, and you yeah. start over but if you die and then you pop back up and you you know you're using all your lives or whatever you you uh, you get to keep your your weapon until you run, run out, out of ammo so, right, yeah right. yeah which is nice I really think that that's a smart evolution that Metal Slug didn't didn't really do with hmm. those first like five six games so, yeah yeah uh, the playable characters then end up going through a flooded ancient Japanese looking city. Very ancient looking, those old buildings with like the, they look like shrines, yeah. almost. Very like country-esque for, you know, Jap- Japanese, Japanese atmosphere. Country, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as the level goes on more and more, like as you're moving through the level, uh, it becomes more and more modern looking. You get these like buildings that are like sunk, sunken, um, yep. these office buildings and these giant like skyscrapers and stuff that are kind of in the distance. And the boss of this stage is a train riding the rails above our heroes. You're sh- constantly shooting up at this train to defeat yeah, it. Yeah, this one was kind of a pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but this was a lot of fun. It was visually very captivating. I think probably one of the most captivating stages visually, other than like maybe the first stage. Yeah, and uh, you know all the scenes when you're going underwater and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. So that takes us into stage. Four. Next up, let's hear Stage 4-2 on this 2003 release of Dolphin Blue, composed by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonatani, and Maiko Yuchi.
Hey there, Richie Ratchet here for Richie's Underwater Emporium and Breathing School. Got an evil empire you gotta take down, but don't know how to breathe underwater without that hefty equipment bogging you down? Try my six to eight week class where we teach you how to breathe underwater, just like, I don't know, a, a dolphin. Yeah, learn how to ride sea creatures, shoot guns underwater somehow, and observe how to trace princess screams as if you were hearing them from above seas. Head on over to my dock at 444 at Thomas Wave Avenue, Sammy, Florida, 22285. Or schedule an appointment with one of our consultants online at RichieRatchet.com. R! The R stands for Richie. Welcome back. That was stage 4-2 from our highlighted game of the night, day, evening. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, that's what it is. Yes, Dolphin Blue. Yeah, I was I was I was really feeling like the intensity of this one. Yeah, no, this this one was super intense like yeah. Yeah, the I, there, piano is dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Very jaws ass. Yeah, 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 again. Yeah. I really think I I'm really starting to wonder if they if they sat down and like Listen to the Jaws soundtrack before they like started working, on this. <laughs> or like watch Jaws. Maybe, you know? maybe because I mean, like you know, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, who knows? But no, th this one it's de definitely you, you're getting towards the end of the game here. Like you can feel, I mean, in the music especially, you can feel sort of everything building up and building mm. up. Uh, and I mean, in the game as well. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in in just a bit. But like things are. You're still chasing after this evil empire that, mm -hmm. that stole the princess, and obviously, you know, the game's not over, you don't have her back yet, right. so you're still going. Yeah, I mean, like, she still randomly will pop up uh, with some other random girl who's, like, laughing. She does, like, the, oh, 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 like, laugh, the tr <laughs> like, sort of trope-esque, you know, bad lead character <laughs> laugh. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so she's being held by this woman. And then they just disappear. So the princess and this woman disappear. But you never... I don't think you ever see that woman, do you? Like, do you... You don't fight her. She's not the last boss or anything like no, that. No, the last boss is a guy. Yeah. Te technically, the third boss is a woman. Oh, okay. Uh, so I don't know. May maybe... It, um, yeah. Ma ma maybe you're thinking... Because I, I feel like at the end of every level... Yeah. The next boss flies off with the princess. So oh. you, you might be thinking of the end of level two. Because in the first level, she gets taken by this woman. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Like hmm. the very first level when yeah, you started yeah. off, she's in the ship with the woman. She does the oh ho 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 laugh, and then you know she hmm. scoots away. But yeah, and yeah. I and because like at, at the beginning of every stage, so they so they, they call the levels logs. So right. it's Log one, log two, log three, etc. Yeah. Uh, and at the at the start of each one, you know, it gives you that you know log one, and then there's a a picture of the boss. Right, uh, right. So the st log three, the boss is, is is this woman with really big hair and mm. a really tight suit. Mm. So she's the one driving the train, assumedly. Big hair, tight suit. I'm in. <laughs> I figured you would be. <laughs> okay, so that is stage four dash two. Well, it looks like Janine is signaling us again. We have a, a second caller. I wonder if it's. Uh, the woman from earlier. I hope she's okay. Yeah. Let's take the call. Caller, you're on the air with XVGM Radio. Yes, I am the leader of the evil empire. If you ever wish to see the princess again, you'll play a track for me. Play Boss 4-1. Uh, well, I... Uh... Sounds pretty serious. Yeah, I don't want to see anything bad happening to the princess. No, we're not involved in this whatsoever, so we may as well play the track. Yeah, I mean, we've got it. Yeah. Let's play it. Let's do it. So this is Boss 4-1 from Dolphin Blue, the game of the day. And it's by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonetani, and Maiko Euchi on the semi-developed 2003 release on the Atomus Wave.
All right, welcome back. That was our ransom track of the evening, uh, <laughs> Boss Four Dash One. <laughs> well, well spoken there. <laughs> Please don't hurt the princess. No. Okay, so I mean, one of my least favorite tracks, just because it's eh, you know plotting. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a build-up track. Like, yeah. This is the track you hear when, you know, the, the villain is monologuing right. or, you know, getting ready to, you know, pound the hero into mm. the ground with it, with their, their giant mech. Right, um, right. Which I, I think makes sense. I mean, he yeah. called in and told he, us to, to play this track and said, it might up? as well have been monologuing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, this track isn't particularly long either. It's kind of repetitive, kind of droning on and on, so... But it's a good track to kind of set the mood for what's eventually going to happen. So, yep. So with log four, what ends up happening on that adventure, the one that we are just wrapping up? Yes. In log four, you are back on another warship. The heroes get blasted away by a cannon in, in that you see in the background, and it destroys the ship, forcing all the the, the characters, um, you know, enemies and heroes, uh, to platform through the remains of the ship that is now fragmented. Then, when the ship gets too unstable, it's back to riding our dolphin friends. Mm-hmm. Some of my favorite parts of this game. Yeah, definitely. It's just a lot of fun to ride a dolphin. Yeah, More yeah. More games need to, to ride dolphins. <laughs> like, I think, like, Echo should be riding another dolphin. <laughs> 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 dolphins riding dolphins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cats living with dogs, mass hysteria. Mass hysteria, that's right. But finally, we end things with a boss battle under the sea. With, Under the sea. Yes, uh, against a giant red crab no. <laughs> <laughs> named Sebastian. Sebastian yes. uh, but it's, a, it's an underwater boss battle with a small but powerful ship that uh, we're pretty sure was the culprit that blew up the ship that, that we were just on. Right. The boss has a cannon that is a very similar style or the same mm. as what we saw in the beginning of the, uh, the level. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. It, it looked like the same type of cannon. It's like this little, like... Kind of like on the thinner side cannon, yeah. and it kind of blasts away, but like blast that it's shooting is like super powerful. Yeah. So, and I think that makes the most sense, all yeah. things considered, like considering the context of the level and everything. Like, you, it starts off with you getting blown up, and then at the end of the level, you're fighting the thing that puts you in this stupid circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, true. If that's not the case, then oh well. That's that's the <laughs> head cannon now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And, and I feel like at this point we're kind of rounding the corner to our episode. We're approaching the end, so to speak. Yep. And we'll talk about the very last level after we talk about our next track, which is actually the ending. It's yep. ending zero. on XVGM Radio, and that was Ending Zero from Dolphin Blue, our game of the day. And that, again, came out in 2003 on the Sammy Atomas Wave. I'm going to call it now. This is my favorite favorite track of the, of the podcast. <laughs> we, we can revisit this at the end, but uh, I mean, the, 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 this track was one of my picks, and it was right off the bat, as soon as I heard it, I was like, I want, I want this in the episode because of the, the sounds in the opening, like the, mm-hmm. the very classic video game leapy bloopy sure sure <laughs> things that are, that are right there interesting so my take on this one is i feel like the audio on that lead synth is way unbalanced <laughs> and this is yeah, yeah. specifically the track that was kind of driving me nuts in trying was to find, it? yeah oh, this- <laughs> because i was listening to this and i was like this reminds me of the x-men arcade game because i have that mm-hmm. soundtrack and the version that i have 
the synths are some of the synths are like way louder. Like the bass line yeah. is super super loud, <laughs> and some of the other synths are like more in the background, or much more subtle. And it's a bad rip of the soundtrack. Uh. And so hearing this, I thought the same thing, and I was like, wow, that synth is really overpowering. Like no, way, I think they just wrote loud. it that way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like listening to it now, I mean, with both headphones in, it definitely seems like that's. That was intentional. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it kind of turns me off a little bit on this track mm. just because of the lack of balance. Mm, that's I just feel like it's way too loud and overpowering. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is about it, but <laughs> it just kind of bugs me. But like, <laughs> music-wise too, this is also a very short, not really repetitive track because it doesn't yeah. really repeat that much. But it is a pretty short track. It's it's over before it it began, kind of. Yeah, well, I mean, that, and that's because it's it's you know ending zero. There, there. I think there's like five ending, uh, f- five ending tracks, which mm-hmm. in reality they, they sort of blend one into right into the next. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot more than five. I take mm-hmm. that back. Uh, <laughs> the, the the ending is a very long thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I I just I, I I like it for I think the exact reason that you didn't like it. Like I liked how sort of loud and front and center in your mm-hmm. face. That, uh, that that opening synth was, yeah. and then there, there's a there's a part like you can hear a piano in there, and in my head uh, I, I see a child just like pounding a single key because like it's, it, the piano that's like in there dong, is, is dong, a single dong, key, dong, yeah, dong. Right, it's right, not like right. chordoning, it's just like do 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 yeah, do yeah, do yeah, yeah, do yeah. So that I mean that made me laugh because huh. of my my own visuals. Okay, okay, <laughs> interesting. Well, that's a part of podcasting. You don't always necessarily <laughs> agree with the other person that's picking the tracks. But at the same time, I think that that's good, though, because it kind of showcases, like, differences. I think you and I tend to agree on a lot of different we, we do. stuff. And Look, so, we're agreeing right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we agree to agree. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like uh, with a track like this, it, it kind of showcases the difference that you and I do have mm-hmm. on these types of tracks. So I think that's good. Yeah, I agree. So this last level, uh, the last level starts off on a ship but then moves into a very industrialized internal area of a warship full of like platforms and ramps and things like that. It's very industrialized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's a helicopter fight inside, which then leads to an oil rig looking ship on the outside. And before we get to the final battles, a missile launching station that has the bad guy's symbol on it almost looks like kind of like a cape oh, cape yeah, topper. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then underneath where, at like after you defeat that ship, underneath where its remains were, uh, after the ship kind of blows up, everyone's like kind of graduating the main characters or whatever, uh, you know, Aereo and uh, Anne. And then at that point, uh, a flying aircraft pops up out of the bottom. And I believe it still has the, the princess. You know, she's still there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, with this uh, final, final boss. Um, who's kind of like the overlord of the uh, the whole evil empire? Blood yeah. yeah. Uh, so at that point, we jump on our dolphins and we go off to defeat the final boss once and for all. And good times are had all around the dolphin blue atmosphere. And many, many continues. Yes, yes, <laughs> tons and tons of deaths and continues. But you know, when you're emulating it, who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I pre preloaded it with like fifty something yep. uh, coins. Yeah, I think we actually ended up putting more. More, in yeah, we did. Yeah, you die a lot in this game. Oh yeah, so I mean everything you, kills you. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. So let's go into our final track, which is ending two. This is my final pick, and again, it is Dolphin Blue, the game that we're listening to, developed by Sammy in 2003 for the Atomus Wave, by Akihiro Uchida. Toshihiro Yonitani and Maiko Iuchi.
welcome back to XVGM Radio. That was our final track of the day, ending to From Dolphin Blue. <laughs> All tracks composed by Akihiro Uchida, Toshihiro Yonitani, and Maiko Euchi. And that was from our developed that was developed by Sammy in 2003 for the Atomus Wave arcade system. Yes. Yeah. So oh, really nice. Really nice ending. I love this ending. I think it's great. The only thing I have complaints about is that end, the very, very end. Yeah, that very dig, long. dig, 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 dig. Because again, it's very abrasive since. But on top of that, they just keep going on and on. <laughs> I mean, I think if they repeated maybe like three times, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be the best. Three or four times, like ding, 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 ding. And then, like, after the fourth, it, it kind of like sustains, like mm-hmm. a sustained note. Yeah. Like, or maybe like a dun 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 dun, you know, like almost like, like, like a, a Zelda finale. kind yeah, of yeah. finale thing. That would have been cool, but then it just keeps going and going and going. Like the Energizer Bunny, <laughs> I was and you're just like, gonna say that. Yeah, you're just kind of like, oh, uh, you yeah. should have like <laughs> called it quits after that like seventeenth re- repetition. <laughs> so that's my only gripe with this track. But otherwise, I love the finale feel to it. Yes, uh, the softer piano kind of style, but still kind of sounds almost like Baroque era a little bit. A I, little I bit. That. I can see that. Yeah. I, I I like how different it is from the rest of the soundtrack. Yeah. I'm um, like definitely we we've we've come from all of this like almost like rockish like like so, some some like some prog funk, rock, some funk, yeah. Progressive but, rock, but, but, right. But more like rockish type music sure. to this almost orchestral like you said, like finale piece. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it's it, it like it throws everything, everything into stark contrast, but with what you're seeing as you're going through the ending, like all these little like images of you know the, the princess, the characters, being rescued, the characters, yeah, the princess stuff, being rescued. Like right. it works really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. So that's Dolphin Blue. So we want to hear everyone's favorite track for what they thought was the best pick. What was your favorite pick, Justin? Uh, I'm not changing my answer. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, ending ending zero yeah. is is still still my favorite. Okay. Okay. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. <laughs> well, that was one of your picks, and actually, yeah. we both picked one of your picks. Oh, what's yours? Around. Stage two dash two. No. Oh. I love that song. That's that funky one. Yeah. 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 I was really feeling that one. That's so. a, that, that, that's a really good one. Yeah, I, I think these are all really good ones. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> good stuff. Digging it. So that's Dolphin Blue. Yeah. So, we'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon patrons, without whom this show's continued improvement would be impossible. They are Alex Messenger, Scott McElhone, Cam Worma, Chris Murray, Kung Fu Carlito of the Heroes 3 podcast, Chris Myers, Peter Panda, The Autistic Gamer 89, and Mixmaster. If you would like to become a patron, you can sign up at patreon.com slash xvgmradio. There you can see the different tiers as well. Just $1 gets you a thank you and access to our monthly live shows. You can visit our website, xvgmradio.com, where you can listen to all the episodes and learn more about your hosts, as well as any of our guests or composers that we've had on the show. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can always email us at xvgmradio at gmail.com. And if you'd like what you've heard, please consider giving us a rating on iTunes and a review. You can also join our Facebook group and chat with other VGM lovers at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash XVGM radio, where we talk about everything from current game news to sharing awesome VGM tracks or just talking about the podcast itself. And you can find us on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle for both of those sites is at XVGM radio. If you don't have any other social media or just want to try something unique, check us out on our discord group chat. Links will be in the show notes. So what do we got coming up on 23? Yeah, 23. We are going to be focusing on boss themes. Yes. We're going to be playing music from games, and it's specifically like different boss themes. And, you know, we've got some pretty interesting stuff here. We've got a lot. We've got some popular stuff, but then we've got some super obscure stuff. Yes, we do. That's like, whoa. Why? Why? What? How? <laughs> like, who? Who? What? Where? Why? How? Yeah, I yeah. can't. I can't wait. Yeah. No, this uh, great music. Yes. I cannot wait for this episode. <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. So, once again, this is Mike and Justin signing off for XVGM Radio from our highlighted 
You're you're trying really hard I, I, not to I'm, say dolphin I'm, blue. I'm really really <laughs> am. Try, trying to find other ways to say the same thing over and over so that it's not just like getting dolphin stale. Dolphin cerulean. <laughs> cerulean aquatic mammal. Yeah yeah. Flipper. Flipper. Azure. Flipper, <laughs> Flipper blue. <laughs> No, because that still doesn't work. It's blue. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Either way, yeah. That was that, that that was stage four dash two. No alternate name, just Mayoki. My my yolk. My eco. My yogurt. My my yogurt. <laughs> my yogurt. My yogurt is Gucci. <laughs> yep. 